Hi, DIY friends. It's Shannon from the dailydiyer.com and I have some awesome Dollar Tree outdoor hacks for you today. We're going to be using mainly Dollar Tree items to keep this budget friendly. These are all projects that are super easy that anybody can do as well. The first one, we're going to need a solar light and also a pack of these children size hangers from Dollar Tree. Big tip here, always test your solar lights before you use them. So pull that tab, test it out if they work, then you can move on with your project. Nothing worse than having a solar light that doesn't work after you've done all the work to it. So we're also gonna need four hangers. We're gonna make an outdoor butterfly. So to do that, we're gonna take our hangers, put the hooks opposite each other, making sure the points touch in the center. We're gonna do that twice, one on each side. Obviously, these are gonna be our butterfly wings. Grab some of these cable ties from Dollar Tree 2, the white ones since our hangers are white. And we're gonna start by adding one of the zip ties to the points that are touching the there on the side. A good tip here too is to not tighten your zip ties all the way until you've got this all put together. The next zip tie you're going to put those hooks together on the opposite side, tighten them up a little bit, get them situated how you want it, and then go ahead tighten up those zip ties, come in with some snips and snip off the tails. We're going to repeat this for the other side, connecting them at the points and at the hooks, snipping off the tails. So now we have two butterfly wings looking good so far, but we're going to be using that solar light in the center there to give it some outdoor pizzazz. But we need to attach these wings together first. We don't want these to go anywhere. We don't want our butterfly flying away. So we're going to add two zip ties to the center there, connect them together, tighten them up, snip off those tails. And now we can add our solar light. We're going to use two more zip ties, connecting them in the center. Now you can leave it as is if you want a white butterfly, but I wanted to give my butterfly some color. So we're going to take the solar light part off of this, and then we're going to head outside with our spray paint. And here is where your creativity can really bloom. Grab whatever colors you want, get some metallic colors. You could even do glitter pearlescent. Like I said, get creative, whatever color you want to create for your outdoor space. I love the rainbow colors, obviously. So I went with yellow and blue and pink and just kind of hit it here and there, kind of like a butterfly wings would be. So I didn't really color block it. I just kind of added speckles here and there and did two coats, let that dry, then went ahead and reattached the solar light. And then to hang this, I grabbed these command style hooks from Dollar Tree. I like these clear ones the best. And we are just going to take that and use that to hang our butterfly. I'm showing you here on our fence, but you could put this on siding. You could hang this from a shepherd's hook wherever works in your space. So I definitely wanted to show you this during the daytime. Look at all those bright, fun colors. And I also wanted to show it to you in the nighttime too, so you could see it all lit up. If you enjoyed this project and you love fun DIYs that are affordable, simple, and so easy and you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. There's also a bell next to subscribe that you can click and get notifications whenever I post new ideas just like this one. Now I'm so excited to share this project with you because it turns out beautiful and it turns out so, so good. And you're gonna need to start with one of these wire hanging baskets from Dollar Tree. And the first thing we're gonna do is take off the chains that come with it, but set them aside. We're gonna be putting them back on here shortly, but it's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to work on this project without them hanging around. So you just have little hooks on them and they pop right off. And we are going to add some little crystals hanging off of these to make an outdoor chandelier. I found these little crystals on Amazon, very affordable. I'll link them down in the description box below. I really liked them because they come with hooks on them already. So it's gonna make it really easy for us to attach them onto this hanging basket. So I'm using some needle nose pliers to just crimp those hooks onto each one of the wire dividers on the basket. I also probably should have mentioned that we are going to turn this basket upside down. So our crystals are actually going to hang from the top rim of this basket. At this point now, we can start adding back on the chains that came with it. But this time, instead of attaching them around the top, we are going to attach them around the bottom, which is going to now be the top. So you can see how it's going to hang just like this. Again, we're going to grab out another solar light 
And as always, we are testing it out before we add it to our project to make sure it's going to work. And unfortunately, the Dollar Tree solar lights kind of slide right down into the circle opening of this basket. So no big deal. We're going to fix that problem with a little bit of wire and we're just going to attach it onto a few different points to make a triangle that is going to close up our gap and make it a little bit smaller. So our solar light will just sit right there on top. And it really is just that simple, quick and easy to make this hanging outdoor chandelier. I was amazed by this. We had so many rainbows reflecting into our house as our kitchen sits right off our back porch. So that was really pretty to see. And then I had to show you, of course, at nighttime too, when the solar light lights up and still kind of bounces some light off of those crystals that hang at the bottom. I really hope you give this project a try. It was so quick and easy and it has such a beautiful, gorgeous look in the end. Back in Dollar Tree, we're gonna grab this planter. It is a huge planter, a 14 inch planter for only $3 in the plus section. Such a great deal on such a large planter. Unfortunately, I needed to take this one inside to do some spray painting as we had some not so nice weather that day. And instead of the orange color, I'm going to use some oil rub bronze spray paint here to give this planter a makeover, just giving it a couple coats and also going down onto the inside edge of this planter so we don't see any of the orange poking through. Now here's a cool tip and trick. Grab some pool noodles from Dollar Tree. I had some leftover from Christmas time and Dollar Tree now has this really cool pool noodle knife, which works like a dream. So if you can find it at Dollar Tree, I highly recommend to keep it around. I'm using it to cut down these pool noodles into smaller sections because we're gonna use them as filler pieces in this giant pot. It's gonna save us from having to fill the entire thing with soil so that it's gonna save us some money. So I'm just adding my potting soil on top of those pool noodles and we're gonna plant this blackberry bush. I am so excited about this. I love blackberries. I hope I don't kill it. If you have any tips and tricks on how to care for blackberry bushes, leave them in the comments for me down below. I could use all the help I can get there. And so just adding some more potting soil, basically planting the bush, right? And I thought it'd be nice to also create an arbor to add some more stability to this bush as it grows. So these are actually wooden barbecue skewers. You can get a Dollar Tree, really long ones. And I'm, I have six of them here, just sticking them around the outside edge down into the soil. And then we're gonna gather them all at the top there and we're gonna use a rubber band to hold it in place. Now, obviously a rubber band is probably not going to last very long probably is going to dry rot from the sun and the rain. So this is just kind of a temporary hold for us right now. And then we're going to use some Dollar Tree jute to go over the rubber band that will more permanently hold this little arbor thing together for us. So just wrapping it around and tying a couple knots to hold it all together. So I love the update to the pot. It makes it look a little bit more fancy, high end looking. I love the little arbor that also makes it look really fancy, but it's also got a great purpose as well. And cross your fingers for me again that this blackberry bush develops, thrives, and we get some blackberries by the end of the season. So what in the world are we heading into the baking section to grab a cake pan for when we're doing outdoor DIYs today? Well, we're gonna use these cake pans and some of these plates to create our own stepping stones. And this is such a fun project. Grab some plates that kind of color coordinate. We're also gonna head over and grab ourselves some glass beads. You want the ones with the flat bottoms, not the round ones, because those are gonna stick out. Unless you want them to stick out. I guess you absolutely could if you wanted to. But we're gonna use these to add decor on top of our stepping stones. Now, of course, safety first here. I probably should not be wearing flip flops, but I am, we're just gonna be careful here. I have my gloves on, I have my safety glasses on. We're putting a plate in a trash bag and taking a hammer and literally just hammering this plate so that it is in tiny, smaller little pieces. I was so funny. The lady at the checkout was like, oh, I'll wrap these plates for you. And I'm like, oh, you don't have to. I'm going to break these apart anyway. So they still survived. Didn't have to um, worry about that so much. But once I got all of these plates 
broke down, I put them into a dish. I actually moved these over onto a pizza pan so I could see them. I also had to kind of go back and break down some of the bigger pieces as the bigger pieces aren't gonna work for this. You want small little pieces, kind of spread them out so you can see what you have. Same thing with your glass beads. And then you need to prep your cake pans. Same thing, I know it's so funny. We're gonna use some cooking spray that is literally going to lubricate up our pans so that way once we go to dump the stepping stones out, they will pop right out like butter. So just lightly spray them. Then we can start working on our concrete mix. This is Quickcrete and I'm going to tell you right now, this honestly was something that we just had in our garage. So used what we had. It's probably not the best and you'll see why here in a little bit. Um, so I will link down in the description box a better option for Quick Crete that will work better for your stepping stones. I do want to mention right now though, safety first here as well, you want a mask on when you are working with concrete. It will definitely get in your lungs. You will have horrible respiratory problems if you breathe in that dust. So absolutely wear a mask here. And you want to just mix it up until you have about this consistency, a little bit of water at a time. And then once you have the right consistency, you can just scoop that right into your cake pans. I kind of smeared it around and kind of leveled it off as I added a scoop at a time, making sure to get around all the edges. This, once I started doing this, realized it's probably not the best concrete. There's better stuff out there. Um, this kind of had little rocks in it and you probably want more of a sand type consistency. So like I said, I'll link some down below. It didn't stop us from getting in there and decorating these though. My son had a ball. He wants a garden this spring. So we're gonna be putting these in a garden for him. One of my daughters also got involved here. Again, making sure you are wearing gloves for adding all of your elements into your stepping stones and pushing them down so that they stay in the concrete once it sets and dries. Now you wanna let these set for a good 24 hours or read your concrete instructions to see what it says specifically. We let ours sit for 24 hours and unfortunately, I'm not quite sure that that was long enough or we added too much water, not enough water. We had a couple casualties here, these first two. Unfortunately, it did not make it, which is why I don't recommend this concrete mix and I'll link a better kind down in the description box. I was much more careful with the next two and those just happen to be my son and daughter, so it's okay. Though I'm glad that those are the two that survived here, but they looked so pretty in the end. Sad the other two didn't make it, but maybe we'll give this a try again another day because it was a super fun project to do. Have you ever seen the really pretty glass gazing balls in gardens? We're gonna make our own. Dollar Tree style. And you're just gonna need a bubble glass vase and another kind of planter that it fits down into. So we are going to, of course, make this beautiful with the help of some alcohol ink. If you've never used this medium before, it's super easy to work with and it is so fun to create with. We're also gonna use some canned air. You can keep your eye out because you can find this at Dollar Tree sometimes too. If you can't find it and you don't wanna spend the $5 I think it is at Walmart, then grab a straw and just use your own air and blow into a straw and it'll help dry this alcohol ink. And there really is no right or wrong way to do this. It just kind of has a mind of its own. And you just put a few drips inside your vase, kind of roll the vase around until it dries, or you can come in with your can of air and kind of push your liquid around. It's also gonna dry it at the same time. So it gives a really cool effect. And if you just are using a straw, now is the time to also kind of use that to help move around the ink and dry it at the same time. This stuff dries pretty quickly, so you do have to move kind of quickly as well. So I did one color at a time, and then the last color is what I use to kind of connect all the colors together or get in between any of the gaps that weren't filled with a color yet. So I worked my way around this entire vase, just creating kind of splotches of color here and there. You wanna make sure you get the top and all the way down to the bottom edge. So look how pretty this is. And depending on the colors that you choose, 
it's going to completely turn out different and they also have some metallic colors so i'll link these alcohol inks down in the description box as well so you can find them on amazon if you want to give it a try too they work on christmas ornaments as well so keep that in mind now we have our little planter from dollar tree and i'm going to show you a couple ways you can display this little gazing ball you can take the fairy lights put it the batteries in the bottom and then kind of loosely wind the lights around your hand and then stick those into the vase pop your vase upside down onto the top of your planter and you have a gorgeous little light that you can use indoors or out so this is just one idea but you can also grab out a solar light from dollar tree and since there is still light rays coming into this vase even though it's got color on it it will still recharge Again, I'm gonna say it again and again and again, always check your solar lights before you use them to make sure that they're working. So many comments about people saying that they don't like the Dollar Tree lights because they don't work. Well, test them out before you buy them because I've had some good luck with a lot of them. So I just tucked my solar light down into this vase and this really does not do it justice. It looks so much nicer in person. It's kind of hard to capture it at night uh, with the camera, but so pretty put this outside put this inside put it in a windowsill such a pretty little gazing ball so for this project we're using this bicycle wheel wreath we always make wreaths for our front door but what about making a wreath for our tree we can do that with the help of some glass beads and i'll link these down in the description box below as well you can find them on amazon or hit your stash hit dollar tree see if you can find some glass beads at the craft store but you are going to need some floral wire as well we're just going to leave a lot of it on the roll and add our beads as many as we can onto this wire until we have the whole thing used up because it's going to use quite a few beads here. And so now that we have our garland completely filled up as much as we want, quite a bit as you can see. We're gonna take this end piece, we left extra wire at the very end so we can attach the end to our wreath. So we're gonna take that wire, we're gonna wrap it around the divider and also the outside ring there and just twist it as much as we can, we don't want that coming off. Then we're going to use little sections of wire to then wire on our bead garland in kind of a coil shape around to the center at different points to help it stay in place. If you have any tails from the wire sticking off from twisting it, just take your snips and get rid of all of those extra pieces. And of course, I'm sure you're gonna ask, how are we gonna hang this? We're gonna use a key ring hook. Well, that's what I'm going to call it anyway. We're going to wrap that through one of the outside ring sections and use that to hang on a tree. And this wasn't the great greatest angle as the sun was directly above me. But as you can imagine, as the sun comes up and the sun sets, the, it is just going to hit off of these beads and give you that beautiful, colorful glow. I just love it. It is such a whimsical look. Now, if you watched my latest planter hacks video, then you've already seen this project, but I'm bringing this back because you all were just obsessed with it. And it has so many views on Instagram, Pinterest, and of course on YouTube. But if you are new here and you missed it, I'm throwing this in for you now because it's a good one. We're gonna grab several different supplies from Dollar Tree, including a big planter. This one was really, really pretty. So I grabbed that one. And then we need a planter that is gonna flip upside down and fit on the inside. And what in the world are we making? a fountain this is the easiest fountain ever we're again going to use a pool noodle and our pool noodle knife this is what it looks like it's hanging up that you need to grab if you see it at dollar tree because i've used it so much and it does not hurt your work surface so you don't have to put down like a cutting board or anything so i love that we are just going to take that knife cut our pool noodle up into small sections and go around the inside of our planter around the inside planter small pieces here 
the more you fill in, the less rocks we're gonna need. So it's gonna save us some money. So also get down into those little bitty nooks and cre crevices there so that the rocks don't fall down. So you can cut your pole noodles even smaller for those spaces. So this is what we have so far. We're going to use this really affordable uh, solar fountain pump that I found on Amazon. I will link it down in the description box below for you. And we are going to set that on top of the inside planter. It's got suction cups on the bottom, so it grabs on. And then the whole rest of it, we are gonna use our Dollar Tree River Rocks and just go around the entire thing, cover it up. Make sure you get, you cover up all those pool noodles and even the bottom part of your uh, solar pump. So I know I just said that this is a solar pump. However, this actual kit comes with a solar panel and a USB option. So you can plug this into a power source and it will stay on continually, not just when you have sunshine outside. But I thought I would throw that little tip in there. And this is what it looks like once you put the water in and you have the solar panel out in the sunshine, it turns on instantly. It also has little caps. So you can change those out for different water feature options. And the panel has little feet on it so you can stand it up or you can hang it up to get the sunshine that it needs. All of these projects were so simple, quick, and affordable. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments below. If you missed that planner hacks video, I'll have that one popping up on your screen and you can head over and watch next. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next one. Have a creative day.